everyone, this is Chris Stobin from PCMech.com, and today we're going to be uh, teaching you how to manage your privacy settings um, in your Google account. So um, over the past couple of years, Google has kind of opened up their ecosystem a little bit as far as letting users have more control over what Google uses, what Google advertises, what it sends to advertisers. Um, and have sort of a minute amount of detail um, over uh, your entire profile with them, your web search history, your YouTube history, all these other uh, things that sort of go into your, your full Google account, um, which can help with anything from locking down your privacy to completely deleting the account, if that's something that you might want to do. So um, in order to get to this, first what you need to do is you need to go into your search bar and type in uh, Google. com slash account so that's going to be the url that you're going to use to get here so once you're here you're going to see uh normal stuff account preferences how you sign in your security all that kind of stuff what we're interested in is personal info and privacy so once you're in here and i actually just scrolled past the first part because it does actually have some of my personal data but um what you're going to see at the very top is obviously your uh, your personal information. So this is going to be stuff like your birthday, your phone number if you use it to unlock your Gmail or uh, have two-factor authentication, um, your emails that are associated with the account, etc. Sort of like a general overview is going to be the first thing. Um, and also the entire time you're we're going to be scrolling through all this stuff, but you have a sidebar here which has pretty much everything um, that we're going to be talking about sort of on a hot swap. So you can just go in and click that and if you need to get back to anything. So activity controls is, it's a little bit more broad. It's about how, um, how Google services, if you have an Android device, this is actually a lot more important. This is how it uses your location. It's how it uses your map searches, how it uses everything from your browsing activity to your searches to sort of cater results to you. Like if you search for something in maps and it's like automatically it knows where you are, even if you don't have location services, that's probably because it's been using search and browsing um, activity to sort of pair those two together and, and give you a result that's more, um, more pertinent to your type of stuff. So what we're going to do, and I actually have two factor on here, so I'm going to need to uh, do that. Um, so yeah, basically this is where when you go into your web and app activity, this is where you're going to see all your searches, everything you've done recently, your top and the, it, you know, let alone the, the sort of privacy management services of it. You can also just click and find out all your searches, all your, you know, what you use most often, um, all the data that, that Google has on you. It's actually pretty interesting stuff if you're into that kind of statistics uh, sort of searches. And then these are just searches that you can, you can, I mean, you can individually go through and delete or remove each sing, each one of these if you don't want them to be recorded by Google. And these are things that no one can really see this unless they have uh, access to your account. But this is also stuff that they're gonna, they can use to communicate with advertisers. So say, you know, I searched for, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, Joe Rogan podcast or uh, something like that. They can they can use that to try and advertise back to me something about the Joe Rogan podcast. So if you don't like the idea of that or you like keeping Google sort of in the dark about who you are, um, this is sort of the dashboard where you're going to take care of all that. Uh, next, there is the um, places you go. Again, this is this is more for um, for Android users, which I'm not, so it doesn't have any data on me. Um, but if you use if you use Android and you have not turned off the uh, privacy settings, this would be just a map that it's recorded of all your movements, which is actually I think one of the biggest um, biggest things for a lot of people is that they want to be sure that you know Google doesn't have a complete map of everywhere they've been with their phone or their tablet or whoever it may be. So um, here you can you know again if you want to turn that off, you can just go to pause location history. It's right here. It's pretty simple. Um, it doesn't, again, doesn't matter for me, but, uh, if, if you do have an Android device and you haven't done this and you are concerned about Google having your location, this is where you're going to be, uh, managing all of that, uh, all of those settings. So, uh, beyond that, we have the, um, information from your devices. Again, this is, uh, if you have 
Android or any any Android phone or tablet or anything like that. It's it's more of the same as far as like tracking your web searches, tracking your your browsing history, anything like that to uh, collect advertising data, which again some people are not comfortable with. So it's it's not anything that's malicious or anything that Google is doing to try and you know violate your privacy in any way. It's very broad metadata that they just sell to advertisers to make a profit. Um, and again, you know, more stuff with uh, a lot of, if you really don't have Android, you're not going to have a lot of stuff to um, manage in here because most of the most pertinent privacy issues come from uh, Android devices collecting data. Because otherwise it is really just your search history with Google or YouTube, um, which you can actually see right here. It's, it's, it's going to be stuff that, you know, you can't really... It, it, if you use Google, it's going to be in there. If you're really concerned about privacy, you use DuckDuckGo. Um, but the most important stuff is for people who have Android who are not comfortable with it. Again, like here, you can see it. Um, it records your voice activity. So if you say, hey, uh, like, use OK Google, you say, OK Google, search for this. This is where that kind of stuff is going to be stored. Um, and yeah, pretty much that's that's YouTube again. Like I said, you can kind of manage which uh, which videos are in your history. Same same thing as um, uh, the the web search history, excuse me, uh, web web search history. Uh, that was a, a, the first option. So next, there's ad settings, which again is not so much privacy. It's just it's it, you can kind of better cater what Google thinks about you, and then what kind of ads it's going to target towards you. So you can use this to say, oh well, that's not correct. I don't like rap and hip hop, so I don't need those types of ads. So if you, I mean, ads are going to be, it's a universal part of the browsing experience, especially if you use Chrome like I do. And uh, this is just a way that you can either, you know, make it so it's at least a little bit better for yourself so they know exactly what you're into um, and don't display you stuff that you don't need. And then again, more just general sort of stuff that they know about you. It's, it's mostly Google Plus um, if you have a Google Plus account. And then this is the one that uh, some people do like to do is that if you can just, if you'd like, you can just turn it off entirely. You can just take the entire thing and just wonk. And then um, as it, well, so as it, as it can read here, it, it, you're still going to see ads. It's just that they're not going to be tailored to you. So like I was saying earlier, you can kind of custom tailor what ads get displayed to you. If you turn this off, it's not that you don't see ads. It's just that the ads don't have any data on you that they can use to sort of target your specific demographic of like what you like to shop for, etc. Um, and that's where you can control that. And then your account dashboard, and I'm actually not going to click in here because it does have a lot of vital stats about my account personally. Um, however, this is where you're going to be able to see pretty much everything you need to know. And you, there's no there's no settings that you can change in here. It's all it's purely informational. Um, but anyone who's actually clicked in here, you can see that you know it's it's got everything. It's got how many searches you've ever made, how many emails you've sent, how many if you use Gmail, uh, your calendar entries, your photos uploaded to Picasso. I mean, anything that you've done on Google, this is where it's going to be the sort of main dashboard that has all that data and all that statistics. Again, nothing that you can control as far as uh, privacy or or changing your ad settings. This is simply to tell you what Google knows about you. And uh, this is this is the last one. A lot of people actually do like to do this. So this is something that you can use to um, to find out. It, it's a, it's a pure data dump. So you can say create archive, and I'm, I haven't done it in a while, but um, you can essentially use this to. I, I last I checked, they, it actually takes a little while. Oh no, they can do it right off the bat. Okay, so yeah, it used to be that you would do this and you would have to request it, and it would take like a week for them to get it all together. But this is so, as you can see, this is where every single thing that you've done in Google, and we're talking not more than even the dashboard keeps track of every single piece of data that Google has on you. You can download in a single file that um, will contain pretty much everything. I mean, it, you know, th these if you've been using Google for a number of years, these can stretch into the five gigabyte. I mean, they're huge. Um, and again, it's not anything that you can control. It's just stuff that they're telling you that they know about you. Uh, but if you're very concerned about it and you want to know pretty much everything that's in the dashboard, but you want to have it you, available to you sort of on a thumbstick or a hard copy in some, some way, shape, or form, uh, this is where you would get that. And then last, there is the account trustee uh, setting, which is 
you know, it's, it's kind of made for if, if you're in the hospital or something or something goes wrong, um, you can assign a trustee who can sign up via their, uh, via a separate login. So I'm not going to do it here, but this is something that you can use in case you're concerned about, you know, not being able to get into your account or uh, you're perhaps going to be a little bit older or something's going on where you know that you may not have access to your account for much longer and you need someone else to be able to get in. So this is what will uh, give you the option to give someone else a completely separate entity uh, access to your account. And again, you can lock this down the exact same way that you can do it for your own account, which is to say you can put two-factor authentication you can create a new password, you can do all these things that give them their own separate way of getting in that has nothing to do with your login in case you don't want them there, you know, preemptively. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, Google does give you quite a bit of control over everything you can do. Um, there's quite a bit of information once you start diving in. It's actually pretty surprising to find out how much Google uh, knows about you if you've been using the service for a while. If you have any more questions, sign into PCMech.com and give us a shout.